Hailing from Marin County, standing six feet four inches, he's a friend to all day laborers, known at Home Depot as the Orange Amigo. This will all make sense in about five minutes. And down for whatever, whenever, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Joe Mellon. Hi, uh, my name's Joe. Uh, just to start off, I started this year with a bucket. That, start, that said, need a zip, take a zip. And if anybody doesn't know what a zip tie is, it's this kind of black thing that you can make things out of. And uh, the goal, I started with 2,000, and I've got about 500 left. And the goal is, by the end of today, these need to be gone. So uh, you guys are going to get party gifts, which are going to be great. If you guys, so you, either later or now, but just, if you don't know what they are, just take one, and you'll find a use for it later. OK, so again, uh, so this was me about uh, two years ago. Um, and starting off this program, this is our first project that we did. Um, and as I started, I just started, you know, doing the normal product design thing. This was a, a, uh, a bike seat, a retractable bike seat cover that came out kind of whimsically and retracted to uh, solve the problem of a wet bike seat. I moved on through expressions, um, and this is a stool that is actually very hard to sit on, but I love. And uh, <laughs> it's made out of uh, three pieces. Uh, slides together and also falls apart immediately. Um, <laughs> this was uh, learning expression. This was uh, me looking at how I thought about life and how I thought about my life in uh, society and uh, manifesting that in a, for in a physical form. And I didn't do anything. And yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh, wow. Well, great. Uh, so this is a presentation. And so my name's Joe again. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I could just start talking, or we can take time. Uh, okay. So, well, I'll, I'll give you the overview of the presentation. I'm going to tell you uh, <laughs> when this comes back on. I'm going to tell you about some classes that I did, uh, including extreme affordability and um, what else. And then I'm going to go into a thesis body of work, if this actually works. I don't know. Why don't we take a break for a couple minutes? Hand out the zip tie. Hand out the zip tie. Yeah. Run down. It's brilliant. <laughs> Run hand out the zip tie. There we go. So pass them down. There, there's, there's little bunches. So just pass them down the row. There you go. You can pass them down the row. Uh, some love over here. Pass them down the row. Pass them down the row. There we go. It's dark. Yes. Sorry. Here you go. You got to pass them down the row. They're, I made it in little bunches. So uh, zip tie. Together, so you can go. There we go. Pass them on down. This is the best little intermission ever. I'm still mic'd. Great. So we have three minutes. So that's good. I'm the Orange Amigo. I, I don't want to say. I want to say that to the end. Yes. Thanks, thanks a lot. There we go. Oh, there you go. Just put them in your purse. Yeah, you gotta grab out some handage there. There we go. Thanks so much. There you go. There we go. Gotta save some for later. There you go. Thank you. Uh Hi, uh, my name's Joe Mellon, uh, I'm here, uh, yeah, okay, formless uh, expression of my view of life, and let's move on. Great, okay, so this is something in extreme affordability class, this is uh, a guy in uh, Ethiopia, and they used uh, bucket wells to uh, get water. Uh, there's a current product that's on the market there that we were working on, which is this $150 pump that you use your hands to uh, turn a crank, which lifts uh, pulleys through a tube. About, and it can lift about, about 60 feet from uh, the water table. Uh, I worked on a group that basically turned this from a hand crank motion into a leg pedal based motion. And we reduced the part count in half and cut the price in half. So uh, 
I, I think what I, what I learned from this, this is our, our final pump, uh, was just a, really the power of collaboration. And it was a really important uh, in my Stanford experience. I moved on um, to an internship in India this past summer with D-Light. And this was uh, one of our customers out in the field determining whether or not his light was robust enough to purchase. And he decided that by dunking it in a bucket of water for, and submerging it, which was pretty robust. Um, moved on, let's see here, um, to uh, you know, learning out how uh, th th this, this man uh, took apart our solar panel and rewired it so it could charge his cell phone. So like learning how kind of co-creation and kind of following extreme users to see uh, how that was going to play into design. Um, and then just making prototypes and then getting them out to users and just getting tested of like different types of lights and what they liked. Um, and then coming back, uh, I joined a, a business school team. This was on uh, reducing the cost to uh, uh, make, uh, to, to protect ground when you construct a pipeline. And we got out there and we tried different things, made prototypes and um, you know, got the whole <laughs> numbers thing going on, which was a very good learning experience. Um, so, so, I did all of this, and then now, uh, kind of, that was my whole learning thing, and I was trying to apply that to a body of work or master's project. So I wanted to focus on wealth creation, and I was going to focus locally in the United States. Body of work or master's project. So I wanted to focus on wealth creation, and I was going to focus locally in the United States. So, um, I started out with the uh, 10 million undocumented workers in the United States, and I focused on you know, the subset of that, which are the 150,000 day laborers that are on the street any day. Um, as this is a very, this is only 2% of the population, but it's a very controversial part of the population. So I started to work with them, and just to, some basic knowledge: is that it costs them about $2,000 to come up uh, across the border, and they earn about uh, $9,000 a year. So I started out working out with this community and just trying to understand them a little bit. And so when they come here, they go between parking lots and street corners and uh, storefronts, and they just kind of ana analyze where they get more jobs, and they flow between them. And I realized this, what I called this is the confrontation zone. This is where all the problems happen. They, when they go to the homes of their houses and play, pay rent, there's no problems there. When they go to the store and buy things, but when they look for work, it's a lot of problems uh, with law enforcement and uh, local store owners. So, I wanted to figure out how do I remove these guys or give them work outside of the confrontation zone. So I started to look at like what was already doing that. And so there's something called day worker centers, which are places where people work or wait for uh, labor. And so uh, I said, okay, you know, why aren't more people going to these day worker centers? And so I went out and asked the guys on the street, and they said, well, there's not enough jobs. We get more jobs out here, so we're going to be here. So I started out thinking, okay, I'm just going to start working on, you know, how do I get more jobs per week at a day worker center? So I fl the, create the flow of people to day worker centers away from the confrontation zone. Um, my point of view that I ended up with is a uh, hardworking, honest uh, worker needs a uh, meritocracy system to prove his value and escape the confrontation zone. And I'm going to show you how I got there and what, that, what the embodiment of that is. So these are the type of people that I was working with. Uh, these are people at the Mountain View Day Worker Center. Um, mostly male, some female, um, mostly from Mexico. And so I just started. So when I started, I, uh, there was a new development where the commu local community had started putting up signs to tell people where the center was and kind of show that it was part of the community. So I wanted to kind of push that to the next level. So I started you know, bringing that kind of form language and that, those systems into the, uh, the aesthetics of the design thing from uh, signs to t-shirts to point of sale um, marketing. And just, just kind of realize, like, learning just, like, how much systems really give credibility to these individuals. Um, and then I realized uh, when I was walking one day, this, this uh, volunteer, Natalia, oh, I just missed that one. Um, basically, she, she was choosing between two guys, and uh, she chose one of the guys and didn't tell the other guy why she didn't choose him. So he could never improve. So I realized you needed to get uh, enable feedback loops in the system. So I started with paper prototypes of things for workers to give feedback. This moved on to an email form, which uh, Letitia got her first uh, feedback, and then uh, integrated that into the worker system there, and then developed a website system that could scale to multiple centers simultaneously. Uh, what I learned from that is just there's a real need in this society to, or in this uh, demographic is just to build and bank identity, because there's no way to do that currently. Um, so then I went to study the transaction. This is Maria, who uh, runs the center in uh, Mountain View. And she's working with a, a homeowner here to help her uh, begin the transaction with these two individuals that are going to be working for her that day. 
So I wanted to understand how to frame the transaction, and so I started researching different types of transactions. This was my personal statement, which was consisted of a uh, spotlight or searchlight that would uh, highlight a transaction of me selling a uh, booklet on my thoughts of design for a quarter. Uh, I moved on with a collaboration with Eric Pagin, uh, which was called iShine. Um, this was a look at the uh, shoebox, and if we take our shoebox from the 1920s to sh to for shoe shining and uh, bring it today, the transition from your shoes being very important to now your mobile devices being very important, uh, it basically, we charge people $2 to shine their iPhones, pretty much. Uh, <laughs> this was our first customer, and my favorite part of this is he was on the phone talking, and he was walking past, and he just turns and looks and just hands money. It was just like, it was like already in his head, and it was, it was amazing. So, um, and then, yeah, most of it's just made up, but anyways. And then uh, also just in... <laughs> working on the transaction with the, uh, the guy that I had hired in India to get the uh, program going. So uh, what I learned from this is just you need to be an appropriate experience. Uh, we're moving on. So kind of I was building on that, and then uh, in April I went to something called the Day Worker Center Summit in Hayward. And this was all the day work representatives from all day, day worker centers in uh, the Bay Area, and also from the National Network and funders. Um, what I realized here is kind of two assumptions, or two things was, one, that there were only uh, 40 centers in the total in the United States. So if I'm looking at a population of 150,000 people, 40 centers, you know, there's 40 centers, maybe there's 100 people per center, we're looking at a maximum of about 5% of the people in the entire demographic could actually be in a center at any given one time. So if I was going to actually affect a large part of this demographic, I'd have to, I couldn't just be in a center. The second thing I realized is that everyone here is focused on the worker, and nobody's focused on the homeowner side, like, or the, uh, the employer side. Like, what is the, em the employment experience of hiring one of these individuals? So I decided to focus on that, uh, basically by like, uh, re reframing the hiring experience. So I started with a handshake. Um, this is something that's kind of a cultural translation. Uh, in, uh, in the culture where these guys come from, a lot of times when you shake a hand handshake with an employer, you, you, you don't want to give an aggressive handshake, or you don't want to look them in the eye. Uh, because that shows aggression, while here that's something that shows respect and equality. So this was a, a, an advice to teach people how to shake hands. Um, the second thing was that uh, these guys most of the time carry backpacks, and in the backpacks carry tools but, uh, for jobs, but homeowners uh, see these backpacks as kind of this uncertainty, like what's in the backpack, I don't know, I'm kind of worried about it. And so I basically made a backpack that takes the tools and put it on the outside so that the homeowner could see you know, what the person can, can do and also remove some of the mystery. Um, I then also just moved to the purchasing experience. So what if, you know, hiring one of these guys was like a fix, like buying a gift card when you pick up your lamp at Home Depot. So you just pick it up, charge it, and then go. Um, and also, what would it be like if this was just, you know, something you bought on your iPhone app when you're driving home from Home Depot and the guy's there to meet you when you get there. Um, so I took all these things and I basically took some, uh, got some of these design imperatives on the right and just kind of got some basic things like, you know, starting from scratch, really harsh penalties, um, you know, it, it needs to be web, web to text, uh, and uh, reframing the job to a task. Um, then I built, this is our first prototype, where in the top corner you see the, uh, uh, or this is running the prototype, this is the um, uh, analysis of the job, and this is before the job's finished, and this is after the job's complete, and this is the transaction afterwards. And you can see this piece of paper in the worker's arm, worker's hand is the receipt of the, uh, of the job. Um, and so basically what this combined into is a website, which is part of a company that I'm going to be taking forward after this, which uh, for, the, for the homeowner side just focuses on uh, solving their need of getting things done. And on the worker side, just announces, tells them uh, where the job's done and uh, how to get towards it. Uh, and Look just get some pretty. feedback. IKEA assembly, yeah. I have so much IKEA dang furniture. I wish I had known about this. Um, so basically going forward, I, I realized my system is going to have to be, uh, you know, my system changed a little bit. and. Um, but, you know, it's been an amazing experience and learning quite a bit. And from that, I'd just like to say thank you from all the people that have been supportive to me, faculty and family and uh, my uh, classmates, friends. So, thank you very much.